agree. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Just needed to agree. jump in and say that. All right. So I'm going to give the floor over to you. Um, Michael, thank you for raising your hand. You're first up. And all I want you to do is either ask me a question or give me an objection. Michael, you're first up. John, thank you for calling me. Um, I've sold for sale by owner. I know I can pay a flat fee of 150 bucks. And um, I know I can get a photographer and I have a title company that can handle the whole thing. I really don't need you, John. So thank you, though. Yeah, absolutely. You should absolutely do all of those things. And if you did that, you're doing that in order to put your home on the MLS and make it available to potential buyers and real estate agents that were working with those buyers, correct? Correct. All right. So if I were one of those agents who saw your listing and I had a buyer that was going to give you a full price offer, you would want me to see your home, wouldn't you? Yes. Okay. So Michael, that's exactly why we should get together. I just need 20 minutes to pop by, take some notes, ask some questions so I could potentially bring you an offer. Does tomorrow afternoon work or would Friday at 11 be better for you? Friday is good. All right. Thank you for teeing up an easy one. It's an and easy one. <laughs> yes. Oh. And who's next? There we go. Randy, talk to me. Well, John, you know, I'm going to relist with my old agent. Mm -hmm. my best friend all the way mm -hmm. from elementary school. Mm -hmm. Hey, and I think he did a great job the last time, even though we we're on the market for a while mm. and it expired. But I'm going to relist the old agent with my friend, my best friend. Yeah, I get that. I, I totally understand. And, and, and Randy, that's probably exactly what you should do. You know, I, I, I appreciate the fact that you're loyal. I love it when my clients are loyal to me. And just out of curiosity, your home was on the market for six months. And I know when a home doesn't sell that should have, it usually comes down to either price, presentation, or marketing. Now, just out of curiosity, what is your what is your agent telling you is the reason your home didn't sell? Well, he said that um, the market just wasn't right at the time. So there just amazing. wasn't enough buyers out there looking to buy. Okay. So. Yeah. So that's interesting. Randy, what if I told you in the six months your home was on the market, there were 36 homes that sold within a two to three mile radius of your home? Mm. Well, I didn't know that. He didn't tell me that, John. Okay. He didn't mention that. Okay. And if I said, you know, you don't owe your previous real estate agent anything, and you certainly don't owe me anything but you do owe yourself the opportunity to hire the best agent for the job. Wouldn't you agree? I agree, John, but you know, I'm a loyal person. Yeah. That's my best friend. And yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to go with it. I mean, yeah. Uh, it All that other stuff sounds good, but that's my best friend. I can't, you can't taking, breaking up a friendship over this, over this. So, Thanks for I calling. It. I mean, I get it. Hey, Randy, one more thing before I go. If your home would have sold, where were you moving to? Oh, I was just moving across town. I just need a bigger home. I just need, need a, more space. Need a bigger home. Need more space. Got it. Why is that important to you? What would that do for you? Well, the my home right now is like a two bedroom, one bath. I just want more space. You know, I want, I want room to build a studio and mm. maybe a pool. So, wow, yeah, that's exciting. And what's Plan B if it doesn't sell? Well, I hadn't thought about that, John. Plan B. What I, if the values come out between now and another? Yeah. What, what what if values come down between now and six months from now and you're looking at even less money? What if interest rates continue to go up? They're like at 8% per, already. So your home is a lot less affordable today than it was when you first put it on the market. Meaning there's fewer people who could afford to buy your home. 
And, and what if that continues? And not only does your home not sell, but you can no longer afford to sell it. And rather than being in that larger home across town, you're still in your home a year from now, two years from now, four years from now. How would you feel about that? Uh, not too good. Right. If I could show you one way that I could get your home sold for more money and less time, you don't even have to hire me. Just use the idea that I shared with you. Give it to the other agent and sell your home. If I could show you one way that I could get your home sold for more money and less time, would you be interested in seeing how I could do that? Mm, yeah, I'll look at it, but honestly, I'm probably still going to, you know, put it back on the market with him, but I'll look at it, John. Okay, so tomorrow at 11 o'clock or Friday at 4, what's better for you? Neither. Okay, so if we were to meet... I'm busy this week. Yeah, I'm, you know, I am yeah. too. Yeah, I get it. I am busy as well. And if we were to meet, uh, what time of day typically works best for you? Mornings, early afternoons, late afternoons, or weekends? Afternoons. I am not a morning person. Afternoon. Yeah? Okay. So, Randy, I'm looking at my calendar for next week because it sounds like this week is out. And I'm looking yeah. at my calendar for next week. Uh, would Monday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon be better for you? Uh, I'm not a Monday person either, so Tuesday afternoon would be great. Okay. Tuesday at 3 or Tuesday at 4? Four? 4. Sounds great. Cool. I'll see you Tuesday at four o'clock. All right. Thanks, well, John. Done. Well done, Randy. Uh, Kelly, you're up next. Uh, Daryl, you're after Kelly. Where'd she go? Kelly, I lost you on my screen. Let me find you. I'm sorry. I wasn't, I said it and I was muted. There we um, go. So this is for circle prospecting. Got it. Um, how'd you get my number? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I have this service that provides me with a list of everybody in the neighborhood and you're on that list and your number's on that list. Well, I thought I was on the do not call registry. All right, so let's do a timeout. Okay, it's a good question, Kelly. I'm not gonna role play it. I'm just gonna have a conversation with you, okay? Okay. If I get that, first of all, I shouldn't be calling somebody if they are on the do not call list. Okay, that's the official professional response. Now, if you ask me what I did when I was a real estate agent, it's a different conversation. But this is one of those, this time is not like that time. Hear me. This time is very different than eight, nine, 10 years ago. Companies are paying millions and millions of dollars. Uh, so I'm not calling people that are on the do not call list. Now, Kelly, if I get somebody that says I'm on a do not call list, here's my response. Kelly, please forgive me. I didn't see that and I will take you off my list. Yeah. All right. You want to know what the next thing I would do? What's that? Do it, put, take go, to their, go, go to their neighborhood the next day and knock on their door. Okay. Hey, Kelly, John Dietz, I'm the guy that called you yesterday. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> there is not a do not knock list. Well, I've now, had no solicitation, though. Oh, that's fine. Kick me, out of, kick me out of the neighborhood. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm fine Thank with you. that. One of my one of my agents that I that I coached for many years shared a story that he was knocking doors and there was a police officer that was following him. And the last door he knocked on um, before the police offer, officer approached him and let him know that somebody had called and complained, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the last house he knocked on, and he wasn't going to knock because he saw this, this officer and he was afraid, but he knocked on one more door. He got the listing appointment with that homeowner. And then the officer told him, you're not allowed to solicit it in here. And he left. <laughs> All right. He's like, I got what I needed. Thanks. I'm out of here. All right, guys, who's next? Talk to me. 
right I'm going to call on you if you don't talk to me. Daryl, go. Yeah, so, John, um, the reason why we took it off the market is because, you know, the interest rates, they, they came up. And I think we're just going to rent it for, you know, the next year until the, or until interest rates come down. I understand that that absolutely may be the right decision. Just out of curiosity, Daryl, how many rental properties do you own? Oh, just that one. So zero. You live in that house, right? No, it's um, it's my rental property. That's the oh, that's okay. a second property. All right. Rewind. <laughs> Edit that out. I should have known that. And Daryl, how long have you been renting this property out? Uh, we rented it uh, last year. We actually we've been renting it since we got it. We had it for about five years now, and um, yeah. So we've been renting it for about five years. Okay. Have you ever had anybody that didn't pay their rent? We have been very fortunate, and the people that we cross examined before they got into the place. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they had jobs that were sustainable and they paid the rent. So we were very fortunate because I've heard about all kinds of things where people didn't have to pay the rent and they didn't have to leave. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we were, I, I consider us fortunate in that sense. Yeah. You know, my greatest fear and, and, and I have clients who are also investors like you. And one of the conversations that I have with them is what's your greatest fear? And what I hear over and over again is the same thing that would be my greatest fear, which is I get somebody in the property who's not paying their rent. It takes me four or five months to evict them. I'm losing money, three, four, three, four thousand dollars a month, whatever my rent is during that time. And then I get the property back with ten, twenty thousand dollars in damage. Now. You've had great success and that hasn't happened to you so far. And that's awesome. Here's the other thing that I know. You bought the property five years ago, which means you have a lot of equity in the property. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, congratulations. And if you knew that your home was worth more today than it would be for the next five years, what would you do? We would sell it. We yeah. would definitely sell it. Yeah. And what I'm hearing is you don't need to sell it right now. Is that correct? No, we don't need to, but it's things yeah. that we can do with the, like you said, we do have a lot of equity and there's a number of things that we could do with that equity uh -huh. in case we did sell it. So okay. it does make sense to sell as well. Okay. I get it. And would you rather sell your home when you don't have to, or when you have to? I rather I rather sell it right now. It's, it's a wife that's kind of like up and down with the property. She wants to kind of wait and see when interest rates come down. But as far as me, I would I would sell it right now. Okay, got it. So here's what I think we should do. I think we should get together. Let me sh take a look at the market with you. Let's talk strategy. And all I'll do is I'll share what's going on in the market so you and your wife can make the best decision for you. And by the way, if the right decision is to continue renting, I'll tell you that. I'm not attached to the outcome. I'm going to hit my goals every month, whether you list with me or not. All I'm going to do is share with you what's best for you. So does tomorrow afternoon work or would Friday at 11 be better? Okay, one more question, John, before, um, before I answer that question, because... I've been getting a lot of calls and it's a lot of different real estate agents and I can't hey guys. Can I butt in for a moment? I just want to show you all of you that when you do this over time, I already know what the question is. Most of you do. Right. Um, and I've got the answer. I'm not saying that to brag. Okay. Um, however, it's super important for me to listen to Daryl because everything inside of me is screaming to respond right now. I'm like, oh, I know, I know, I know. I'm like Horshack in, in Welcome Back Cotter, right? Okay, Daryl, continue. Okay, yeah, before um, before I say yes to any kind of appointment, um, how many ho homes have you sold in Ontario? And can you see, send me what you would do to sell my home and you know your resume of your company so I can know, you know you're a legit person? Because like, well, at least, you know, actually just send me how many homes you sold in Ontario the last two years. That that'll suffice. Yeah. 
I get it. Daryl, I, I would love to send you my resume and um, I would rather tell you uh, what I'm going to do to get your home sold versus um, I would rather show you versus tell you. And when somebody asks me how many homes I've sold in a particular area, I'm hearing them ask if I'm the local expert. And that's basically what you're asking, isn't it, Daryl? Pretty much. Yeah. And what's important to you about hiring the local expert? Because they know the area. And, um, and you know, I just feel like that's the person that's going to get the household. Yeah, I get it. You know, I, I know the area. I live in the area. I'm a local economist of choice. Matter of fact, I would say nobody knows the local market better than I do. I am a strategic pricing professional. I understand where we need to price your home in order to attract the right buyers. And I'm an expert at marketing in order to attract the right buyers. Now, I'm also super motivated. And if I were to list my home, I would rather hire someone who's working hard to become the local expert versus someone who is already the local expert. You see, somebody who's already selling lots of homes in your particular area, they're going to sell a lot of homes whether you hire them or not. And I'm actually pretty new to the area, but I know the market. And when you hire me, I am super motivated to get your home sold. Matter of fact, the only way I win is when I sell your home. Hire that agent who's already selling lots of homes. They win whether they sell your home or not. I mean, you would want to hire somebody who's motivated to get your home sold, wouldn't you? Yes. So tomorrow at 11 or does the next day at four work better for you? Um, you know, let me talk to my wife later today and um, it'll, it'll more than likely be tomorrow. More than, so, um, yeah, get back with me later today. Like sometime after five, I would have talked to my wife by then and then we'll have an answer for you. OK, so here's what we should do. Let's go ahead and block the time for tomorrow at four. I forget what time I said. <laughs> Let's go ahead and block the time for tomorrow at four. That way you're in my calendar. Uh, if I wait until later this afternoon, I might put somebody else in that space. And I don't want to do that. And I will call you towards the end of the day to confirm the appointment. Okay, sounds good. All right. Good job, Daryl. All right. Who's next? Michael, talk to me. I just, I just want to piggy, not piggyback. I just want to go back to um, my objection I gave you. Uh -huh. uh, you're in the, you're on the listing table, the kitchen table with the owner, and they're saying, "Listen, I've done this hunt, you know, many times. I've sold it many times using flat fee MLS, and I've always sold it like this. And um, I rather spend spend one hundred fifty dollars on MLS and uh, have my attorney review all the contracts. So, how can you help me?" Yeah, I get it. Michael, if if you sell your home and you're going to sell your home, I get that. Uh, what is the asking price? What is the price that you hope to get? Five, 500,000. 500,000, got it. And just out of curiosity, the last home you sold by owner, how long ago was that? Uh, uh, a year ago. A year ago. Mm -hmm. Was it a $500,000 home or was it priced lower than 500,000? It was 300,000. Hmm. Is it possible that buyers who are looking for $500,000 homes are more likely to work with a professional realtor representing them than a buyer who's looking at a $300,000 home in our market? Thank you. Um, I'm, let's just say I'm, I'm a cocky, arrogant guy, right? I'm a seller. Uh, I'm sure it's the same thing, John. I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. It's not really a big deal. Um, 500,000, 5 million, who cares? You know, it's the same thing, you know, MLS, MLS, and you're doing the same thing I'm doing. So, yeah, I get it now off script, just to explain to everybody where I'm coming with this. Okay. Um, in Coral Springs, which is the area, which Michael lives 500,000 is not a lot of money today. It's pretty much the average home. But here's what I know from years of experience of doing this. Whenever I have had somebody, and, and it's different with investors, hear that, okay, because it is. But when you're talking to homeowners who tell you every home I've ever sold, I've sold by owner. Well, what do we know about homeowners in the home they're living in today? Most of the time, 
Is it more expensive or less expensive than the last home they sold? More expensive. More expensive. More expensive. More expensive right? The typical move up buyer will sell a property um, 200, 250 thousand dollars, and they'll buy a home that's four to 450 thousand. Okay, and here's the psychology that goes behind this comment. When you sold your last home, you sold it for $250,000. And today you live in a home that you want $500,000 for. And buyers who are looking for $500,000 homes versus buyers who are looking for a $250,000 home, are they more likely or less likely to be working with a professional like me? Is it possible at the higher price, you're not attracting the best buyers because the best buyers in the market are typically working with a professional like me? Now, here's the other question, Michael. If you're the buyer and you pull up and you see a property being sold and there's a for sale by owner sign in the front yard, you're sharp guy. You're, invest, you're an investor. Are you offering full price for that home? No? You got to talk to me because I can't see your head shake. No, no. no. The, the stenographer needs to be able to write this down. So you got to speak. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. At least I laugh at my jokes. Uh, so you're not out for offering full price. Why not, Michael? Because I want to get a better deal if they're not paying the commission. Hmm. Now, the reason you're selling your home by owner in the MLS is in order to save 3%, correct? Correct. I mean, when you put it in the MLS on a flat fee, you're offering a buyer's agent 3%, correct? Correct. So the amount of money you're hoping to save is 3%. Correct. All right. If the buyer is trying to save the same 3%, is it possible for both of you to save the same money? No. And if I told you statistically for sell by owners, sell their home at an average of 92% and I'm selling 92% of the asking price and I'm selling my listings at 99% of the asking price, that's 7% more. If you were to work with me, are you making less money or more money by hiring a professional like me? More money. And if I don't bring you an offer that makes you more money, you would make less money with the offer I bring you. What would you do with that offer? You would reject it, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Yeah, yeah I'm going to pause just like that because I prefer for Mike to say reject it, but when he doesn't, I'm going to give him the answer. You would reject the offer, wouldn't you? Yep, I would reject the offer. So whether you make more money or less money with me is completely in your control, isn't it? Yes. I mean, you're going to reject the offer if it's not more money, aren't you? Yes. So what do you have to lose by hiring a professional like me who's going to market your properties in order to attract the best buyers, not just any buyers, in order to attract buyers who expect to pay retail versus garage sale buyers who are looking for a deal? What do you have to lose, Michael? Nothing. You ready to get started? Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, Daryl. All right, I'm making this out. quick. You're the last one, and we're done. Okay, it's gonna be quick. It's a for sale by owner, um, and I told you I'm gonna re I'm gonna list in the next week. Within I pick the agent I'm gonna list with the next week. Do it again. So, so, uh, again. so okay. yeah, yeah. I'm gonna li I'm gonna list next week. With it, I I have an agent that I chose. I'm gonna I'm gonna list next week. We haven't signed paperwork yet, but. That yeah, I'm gonna list next week. That's awesome. Um, just out of curiosity, um, uh, when your home goes on the market next week, uh, what's the asking price gonna be? Six seventy-five. Okay. And if I had a buyer that was gonna pay six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, you'd want me to see your home, wouldn't you? Yes. Okay. If I were able to bring you that offer before you list your home, 
are you saving money or losing money by allowing me to bring you that offer before it goes on the market? Saving money. Yeah. So that's exactly why we should get together. Okay, John, you did that one great, but I wanted you to do the, uh, you know, you don't owe that agent anything and you certainly don't owe me anything, but you do owe yourself the opportunity to hire the best agent for the job. And I was going to, uh, right when you said the best agent for the job, I was going to cut in and say, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't convince me that you're the best agent out there for the job, that you're better than every other agent. And I was going to let you go to that. Yeah, sure. That's good. Let's go there. Okay. So, Daryl, I am a strategic pricing professional. I am a local economist of choice. I know the market better than anybody else knows your local market. I understand and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an expert at marketing properties in order to attract the right buyer, not just any buyer. And I'm a fierce negotiator. Now, my question for you is, if you knew that I was the right agent for the job, just yes or no, simple question. If you knew that I was the right agent for the job in order to achieve your goals so that you can move to Atlanta in order to start your new job in 90 days, you would want to meet with me, wouldn't you? Yes. Okay. And let's say, for example, you say, no, I'm not, I'm just going with this other agent. Now it's 90 days from now, you're not in Atlanta, you're still in your home and the value of your home has gone down. Meanwhile, I sold your neighbor's home down the street. How would you feel so about be, that? So in between that, you would have asked them. So when you sold this house, where were you moving to? Mm -hmm. So you, So you can have that in that. Okay. Oh, I got to get the motivation, Daryl. Logic makes us think, emo um, emotion makes us act. Okay. I'm parking on pain. It's the future positive versus future negative conversation. And I'm going to find future negative and I'm going to go there and I'm going to park until you ask me to stop. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, what you did right now is... Uh... So I work in rope access, and when we do rescues, you all to when you get to the end of the rescue, you always get to the same point, like the same two attachments. So no matter how you have to get there, you get to it. And it reminded me of that, what you did, because you went to like one of the same objection handlers, but you went to it a different way. And um, yeah, I like that. That was good. Thank you for that.